options have impact. That's a very difficult exercise to see if that is true. But that is the idea. Now, how have we been doing? Uh, here we see the uh, deficit in Iceland. Uh, this is from, uh, from 1901 to 1946. And uh, this is just on the goods balance. And you can see that uh, uh, there was a balance uh, of goods we were uh, exporting and importing uh, almost the same in the early years of the century of the 20th century, and then uh, we um, we get a bit of deficit uh, in, in, uh, on, on the on, on the trade goods uh, balance uh, from 19 uh, from 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 the time we get independent until 1908 or something. Uh, and then we have big fluctuations uh, during the war, uh, and in the in the in the in the twenties. Uh, here is the development from uh, from the end. Uh, this is the current account. This is good. Um, services too, uh, and income uh, from abroad, minus income uh, to, to abroad. Uh, and as you can see here, Iceland has, be, has a deficit of its current account for most of the year. From this until, uh, until uh, Uh, until 19, uh, this is until 1990. And it is below the zero like most of it. Uh, and it doesn't get any better, you know. Here, <laughs> here this, is, uh, this is from 1995. I had some problem with thin painting or something. So this is from 1995, and it gets down to, in total, it gets down to uh, minus 10 percent of GDP in current account. Here is the most recent recent stuff, and uh, here we are about to get into a balance. Uh, we have to balance the books. Here in 2008, the current account was uh, minus 40 something percent, and I think that is a world record. This was uh, due to the crisis, so we follow the bounce and, 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 and all, that, uh, all that stuff. Uh, well, uh, uh, constant deficit since World War II, uh, how is it uh, possible? Well, it is, uh, you, you could expect that with a growing population which is younger, than the populations in the countries around. Then you are kind of in a constant investment phase. So you have to build up infrastructure, you have to build uh, new houses, uh, new factories for those people to work in, etc. And the foreigners that are giving money to you, they trust that they will get it back. Uh, so this, uh, this could be a part of of of, of a, a a phase where we are transforming uh, into or increasing uh, uh, our holdings of productive assets, and that is uh, something that we find in the in the national accounts. Uh, the, Light blue line is uh, an index of uh, productive assets from 1945 until 2008, and the uh, solid uh, or, or the blue line, dark blue line, is uh, the population. 
And uh, as you can see, uh, the uh, stock of productive assets is uh, grown much faster. Uh, and then uh, here you see the uh, GDP growth uh, year by year uh, from uh, per capita from uh, the end of Second World War until, until now. And uh, you can trace this out here. After the war, we had a kind of a, a post-war boom. Then there was a post-war contraction right after that, which ended uh, with the Korea War, uh, I guess. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, a contraction in the late 1950s, uh, uh, and the economy was a bit wobbly until uh, the early 60s when we get a period which uh, is in general termed as the golden 60s uh, uh, here and abroad. Uh, we do not talk about it, but we use a different term uh, using the name of the uh, government that was at that time, uh, which I do not have the English term for. Uh, but then in 1968-69 we get a contraction and that was the collapse of the herring, uh, of the herring stock that I was telling you about. Uh, that caused a severe depression in Iceland and we got an outflow of, uh, of people uh, to Sweden and, uh, to, uh, and even to Australia. Uh, and then uh, in the uh, early 70s, we get a boom in, in Iceland. That is a bit different from what happens in other countries because uh, there they were hit by the oil crisis to all oil hikes, oil price hikes. In Iceland, there were two events that uh, turned things around. Firstly, it was uh, the reaction to the higher oil price was to harness geothermal uh, water for housing. So the, uh, the municipalities went into uh, a huge investment boom in, uh, in that respect. And the second thing was the, uh, the eruption in the Westman Islands. Uh, it destroyed uh, some infrastructure, but you had to replace some two or three thousand people. You had to build new houses for them, etc. Isn't there also the first aluminium smelter alive just around yeah. 1970 for first Christian and Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they were uh, more collective with, uh, with that one, with, with Karma, because they were, uh, the, uh, the construction phase was during uh, the flat years here. So that was a uh, much better time. Um, uh, yeah. So the, here in 84, 85, uh, there was a contraction in the, in the um, cot, uh, this is the start of the, of the quota system. Uh, here we were about to lose the cot stock. Uh, and uh, after that, I think it was the terms of, this is more or less term of trade effects uh, both here and here. And then uh, we, uh, in, in, the, in the 2000, we get this uh, huge boom due to the operation of the banks and all that kind of stuff. It, so, uh, we, were, we were trying to do um, very many things, investing in rural areas, lowering taxes, uh, privatizing uh, uh, state-run commercial banks. Uh, and at the same time trying to run this more or less floating uh, currency in the world. 